Dear students, welcome you all to the session 4 video of chapter Capital Structure, Financial Management, 5th semester BCom. In the previous session, that is session 3 of chapter Capital Structure, we have seen the preparation of statement of income and also the concept of operating leverage. In this session, we will understand the meaning of financial leverage. Financial leverage is the ability of a firm to use fixed financial charges to magnify the effect of changes in EBIT on the firm's EPS. Which means for a small change in EBIT, the EPS will change more than proportionately. And it happens because of the presence of fixed financial charges in the firm's income stream. We know that the company has to pay fixed rate of interest to the debt and fixed rate of dividend to the preferent shareholders. Now, when the earnings before interest and taxes EBIT changes, the debt interest as well as the preference dividend do not change. It remains the same. So what happens is where the earning per share EPS changes to a greater extent for a given change in EBIT. No financial leverage. It results because of the presence of fixed financial charges. That is the debt interest as well as the preference dividend. Now, how do we calculate the financial leverage? Now, there are two situations when preference shares are not there in the capital structure and when preference shares are there in the capital structure. The first case is when preference shares are not there in the capital structure, financial leverage can be computed using the formula earnings before interest and taxes divided by earnings before tax. When preference shares are there in the capital structure, financial leverage is computed using the formula earnings before interest and taxes divided by earnings before tax minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus tax rate. I repeat, financial leverage is equal to earnings before interest and taxes divided by earnings before tax minus preference dividend divided by 1 minus tax rate. It can also be found out with the help of a formula percentage change in EPS divided by percentage change in EBIT. Now, let us understand the concept of financial leverage with the help of an example. Now, imagine a company has the following capital structure. It has 10,000 equity shares of rupees 10. So, 10,000 shares into 10 rupees 1 lakh. 2,000 preference shares of rupees 100, 2,000 into 100, 2 lakh. 2,000 debentures of rupees 100, 2,000 into 100, 2 lakh. The company's earnings before interest and tax EBIT is rupees 1 lakh. The tax rate is 50%. Compute EPS at this level of EBIT. What will be the EPS if the EBIT increases by 40% and EBIT decreases by 40%? Now, in this situation, we will have to find out the earning per share. And we also have to find out how the earning per share will change for a small change, that is for a change, 40% change in the EBIT. Now, we can see here, when the EBIT is 1 lakh, the, uh, we will have to detect the interest. Interest is fixed, 2 lakh into 10%, 20,000. So, earnings before tax is 80,000, less tax, tax is 50%. So, 80,000, 50% of that is 40,000. Earnings after tax is equal to 40,000. Less preference dividend. Again, it is fixed 2 lakh into 10%, that is 20,000. So, the surplus profit is equal to 20,000. Earnings per share is equal to surplus profit divided by number of equity shares. We know that the number of equity shares are 10,000. So, surplus profit is 20,000. So, earning per share is equal to 20,000 divided by 10,000 rupees 2. Now, when there is a 40% increase in EBIT. So, originally EBIT was 1 lakh. So, now there is a 40% increase. 1 lakh plus 40%. So, 1 lakh plus 40,000. So, the new EBIT is 1 lakh 40,000. Less interest. 
It's the same that fixed rate of interest 2 lakh into 10 percent 20,000 earnings before tax is equal to 1 lakh 20,000. Let's tax. Tax is 50 percent. So 1 lakh 20,000 into 50 percent that is equal to 60,000. So earnings after tax is equal to 60,000. 1 lakh 20 minus 60. Now let's preference dividend. Preference dividend is fixed. That is 20,000 rupees. How did you get this 20,000? 2 lakh rupees into 10 percent. Now, the surplus profit is 60,000 minus 20,000, 40,000 rupees. So, earning per share is equal to surplus profit divided by number of equity shares, 40,000 divided by 10,000, it is equal to rupees 4. So, we now know that EBIT has increased by 40%. So, the financial leverage can be calculated in this way. EBIT divided by EBT minus P divided by 1 minus T. So, EBIT is 1 lakh divided by EBT that is 80,000 minus preference dividend which is 20,000 divided by 1 minus 0.5. So, 1 lakh divided by 80,000 minus 40,000, 1 lakh divided by 40,000 is equal to 2.5 times. So, the financial leverage is 2.5 times, which means that for a change in EBIT, EPS will change 2 and a half times. Now, we will see how it is. So, for a 40% increase in EBIT, now we want to know how much the EPS will increase. That is 40% into 2.5, 100%. Let us just check it. The original EBIT was 1 lakh. It has increased by 40%. The new EBIT is 1 lakh 40,000. The original EPS was rupees 2. When EBIT increased by 40%, the new EPS is rupees 4. So, how much it has increased? 2 rupees. 4 minus rupees 2. 2 rupees divided by the original value, original EPS 2. 2 divided by 2 into 100. 100% increase. So, for 40% increase in EBIT, EPS has increased by by 100% which is actually two and a half times. So, there is two and a half times increase in EPS for a small change in EBIT. It can also be calculated by using this formula percentage change in EPS divided by percentage change in EBIT 100 divided by 40 which is equal to 2.5 times. Now, let us see a situation when the EBIT is decreasing. Now, it said that when the EBIT decreases by 40%, what will happen? So, original EBIT, we know it was 1 lakh and 40% decrease. So, 1 lakh into 40%, that is 40,000. 1 lakh minus 40,000 is equal to 60,000. So, here we can see EBIT is 60,000 rupees. Now, uh, less interest. Le interest is 20,000, which is... Uh, uh, 2 lakh into 10%, 20,000. Earnings before tax, EBT is equal to 40,000. And then tax, tax is 20,000. Uh, that is 50% of 40,000. Earnings after tax is equal to 20,000. Less preference dividend. Again, this is fixed. So, we'll have to pay 20,000. So, surplus profit. There is no surplus profit. There is zero. That is, earnings are not available for the equity shareholders. So, there is no EPS. So, originally it was 2. Now, it is 0. So, we now we can see that financial leverage we calculated it is 2.5 times. So, when there is 40% decrease in EBIT, the EPS has decreased by 100%. It's actually a problem for the uh, company. Now, <coughs> So, financial leverage we have calculated using this formula. Now, uh, there is a concept of financial risk which we need to understand. That is, uh, uh, it's a risk which the firm faces when it, it has these fixed financial charges. What happens is, a uh, situation may arise when the firm will not be able to meet these financial obligations. We call it as financial risk. It is actually the inability of a firm uh, of not being able to pay the interest as well as the principal debt am amount. So what happens is the higher uh, operating uh, financial sorry operate financial leverage is good when the EBIT is increasing, but it will be risky if the EBIT is falling or uh, decreasing. In such a situation, the firm will have to face the financial risk. The interest on debt has to be paid by the firm, irrespective of whether they are earning profits or incurring losses. 
So interest payment is compulsory, we know it. So the firm will have to take another loan to pay this interest as well as the debt amount. So financial leverage is actually like a double-edged sword. It means that it has positive as well as negative effects. So uh, it's like uh, uh, both the sides uh, uh, of a, a sword. Uh, if you use it properly, it will be useful. If it uh, at all you do not know how to use it properly, it will actually harm you. So financial leverage will actually help us to increase the earning per share uh, when EBIT increases. But when EBIT decreases, it will be risky for the business firm. That is why it is called as a double-edged sword. I hope you have understood the concept of financial leverage. If you have any doubts, do inform me. Thank you.